Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's so good to see you guys again and I'm really excited to be back. Um, so we're making a Q&A video and I'm answering some of the questions you guys have asked me. So um, what have we been up to? Um, basically we've just been settling into our new spot and um, Mike has been making some changes to the camper and maybe I can show you guys in another video what he's been doing. Um, and it's just made it feel so much more homey and cozy and, um, yeah, we've basically just been doing a lot of work around the camper and Liam is doing really well. He's been saying a lot of new words and he's just been growing up and changing and he's growing so big I just always am like where is this boy coming from where's my baby going <laughs> he's just getting so big and he's just the sunshine of my life I love him so much and um, the next question how do we like Sacramento so we love Sacramento. It's such a great place and there's so much fun stuff to see. And one of our favorite parts is old Sacramento. We love going there and walking around and seeing the river. And yeah, it's a really great place to hang out. Um, have I still been making sourdough bread? And I have not just because everything has been really busy with getting back into the swing of things here. Um, I just put my starter in the fridge and just feed it once a week and I just haven't been making any bread but I am planning to get back into that very soon here. So I can keep making updated videos about that if you would like. Um, I actually dried some of my starter as well so I actually have some backup in case my starter would go bad or if I would forget to feed it or something but yeah so far it's still going very well. Um, the next question what are we liking the most about being back in California? I would definitely have to say the thing I like the most is being around um, the church that we have here they're so awesome and some of the best people that you'll ever meet and um yeah we really enjoy being back at this church that's probably one of our favorite things um somebody asked how has my experience as a youtube creator been going um it's been harder than what i expected and it's been a challenging journey and had a lot of ups and downs but it's definitely taught me that you cannot make videos and look for your affirmation from other people. Um, if you do, <laughs> you're going to be crushed by all the criticism that you get. And then the next question, what has been my favorite and least favorite parts of creating videos and what has surprised me the most? So... I would say that my favorite part is being able to have a community on here and having people support me. Um, it's just so great to see people who have surrounded me over this past year and have watched my videos and have shared and commented and liked. It's been really great and I really enjoy getting to know um, all of you guys. So I would definitely say that's my favorite part. My least favorite part would definitely be editing. I hate editing. It's, it just takes so much time and I, it's not my favorite thing at all. And what has surprised me the most would have to be the comment section. I just didn't quite expect it to be like, some people will just say things that I'm just like, wow, you really say that online? And yeah, I just did not expect the comment section to be as crazy as it can be sometimes. <laughs> and this question, I've seen a lot of people asking it in different formats. And it's basically, how did God lead you to California? Or why did you move to California? And I realized there are a lot of different reasons why people might think we're a little crazy for coming back to California. 
So I want to address those different aspects. So one of them is obviously that California is more expensive than a lot of other states. So for us personally, our rent is not as expensive as it would be if we would rent an apartment. Apartments are really expensive here, but we're not renting an apartment. So the rent, I'm not going to give any actual numbers, but we're not paying a high amount of rent. And that really helps a lot. And as far as food, I know food can be really expensive here, but one of our favorite grocery stores to go to is Winco. It's just one of the best and it always has very good prices for most things. And that's been really helpful. And we also just stick to a, as tight of a budget as we possibly can. And sometimes we have to just make do with what we have and our lives are definitely not fancy. And another thing is gas, and I'm a stay-at-home mom, as you guys know, so I don't have to drive anywhere for work, and Mike mostly uses his motorcycle, and yeah, sometimes he does use a car, so that um, definitely costs a little bit more in gas, but at the same time, I don't think our gas prices, I don't think that our gas expenses are that high. And I know that's a very simple overview. There are a lot of other expenses and there are a lot of other things. Um, but like we just learned how to make do and learn how to manage all of that. So another aspect of being in California is the government. And everybody knows that California's government is not stable and it's very chaotic and messy and a lot of things going on that are not like um, Christian values, and I realized that that's true, and we did not move here because California's government is stable. We moved here because God has called us here to share the gospel and to spread the light of Jesus, and there's verses in Ephesians chapter 6. Um, I'm going to read them because it is so relevant to the battle that we're facing here. So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. Oh, my voice feels like it's wearing out. Sorry. <laughs> For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore put on every piece of God's armor, so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. And it goes on and describes all of the armor pieces that we need to have to be able to fight the spirit spiritual battles. And... The phrases that it uses talks about we are not fighting against people. We are fighting against demons and we're fighting against Satan. So that's the battle that's, that's here. That's ultimately the battle that we're called to fight. We're not called to fight people. We're not called to attack people. We're called to love people and we're called to fight against the demons and the spiritual principalities and the spiritual agendas that are at war here. And there was an Instagram reel that I saw the other day that so perfectly described um, the feeling that I have about it. And it says, I have but one candle of life to burn, and I would rather burn it out in a land filled with darkness than in a land flooded with light. And I thought that was so good. It's just like, I don't want to go where everybody else is a Christian and where everybody else is already believing in Jesus, even though that's wonderful if everybody is. But I want to go to where the darkness is the biggest and where, because that's where the light's needed the most. And I want to be part of God's church fighting against the battle in the hardest places. And... 
Of course, not everyone is called to California, and if you want to leave, go ahead. Like, nobody said that you have to stay here. This is our choice, personally, and I don't mean to come across as judgmental if anybody else wants to leave. Um, we've known friends, personally, who didn't want to stay here, and they left, and we have not cut those people off. Like, they're still our friends, and nobody has to live in California in order to share the gospel. You can be anywhere and share the gospel. It's just, this is for us personally. So, I just feel like there's a problem when God's people are running away from the darkness. I think that we need to be bold in these last times. Sorry, I had to run and take care of Liam. Um, but as those verses in Ephesians 6 says, we have the tools that we need in order to fight the spiritual darkness. And you can go ahead and study that if you would like to find out more. So another aspect is that um, California is not a uh, Christian family oriented it doesn't have those christian values and so people wonder why we could bring liam here and how we can raise him in such an evil environment and my answer to that is as long as possible we will not be putting him in a public school we will we are planning to homeschool him and we have a wonderful church with like-minded friends, and there are kids that are Liam's age that he can grow up around Christ-centered people and people who love Jesus, and we're not raising him in an environment where he's taught all those things. And as he gets older, we can teach him and train him about things in a godly way, and we're not planning to put him in an environment where he's going to be exposed to a lot of those things. And I want to say this in a kind and gentle way. I do not mean this to come across as judgmental at all. But I just want to remind you that as Christians, prayer is one of our biggest weapons. And um, we're not subject to this world we're not victims to what this world does even though it seems rather overwhelming sometimes um god has provided us with the tools that we need to fight and god is bigger than anything in california he's bigger than any problems that our kid will ever face he's bigger than anything that could ever happen and he's able to protect our son he is able to to provide us with the tools that we need to learn how to navigate all these things. And the blood of Jesus is more powerful than anything that Satan could ever throw at him. That's just, <laughs> um, that's just simple, basic Christian Christianity truths. In a time when it seems scary to have kids, it's so important that we take our eyes off of the fear and onto the one who has taken all of that fear and thrown it into the pit of hell already. We don't have to give in to the spirit of fear because as Christians, the Bible says that God does not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and self-discipline. And so I'm not afraid. I know that things look very dark and bleak, and I'm not saying that everything looks amazing on the political scene of course it doesn't it looks very dark but we're not subject to the darkness that's around us and we're here to bring the light of jesus and satan hates family and that's why we've seen such a huge push against family and that's why we've seen such a huge push against um yeah kids and their identity and all that stuff but um I follow this mom on Instagram who shares these amazing reels talking about how we're supposed to pray for our kids and for our families. And I can link one of them below, but she, it just, I love what she posts because it gives me so much hope. And 
Satan is afraid of our kids. He's afraid of us raising warriors. He's afraid of us raising our kids to be anointed with the oil of the Holy Spirit. And he's afraid of what our kids can do. And so I think that's why he makes us feel afraid of having kids. Because he doesn't want us to have kids. He doesn't want us to bring more warriors into the world. He wants to stifle that and he wants to rip the family apart. And one of God's agendas is to raise up families. And one of God's agendas is to raise up more kids. And he has such a heart for kids. So that's that's my answer. That's what I think. And um, I know that not everybody agrees with me. In fact, probably most people don't agree with me. But that's the way that I see it. And it's just part of my prayer that we are all protected by the blood of the Lamb. And we're not alone in this. And so yeah, that's the end of the Q&A video. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye.